have a question for you. Yeah. Do you drink coffee? I do, yeah. Uh, lots of it. Yes, I do. Yes. How many coffees would you say you drink a day? About three. On average, yeah. One a day. We are four. About two to three. If you could describe Melbourne's coffee culture in one or two words, what would it be? Experimental. Uh, fantastic. Aesthetically pleasing. Eccentric and like hipster <laughs> type of coffee shops. Let me just fix this. Well, some interesting answers, huh? I'm in the most livable city right now. It's a beautiful day for a vlog, and this is vlog three. Australian coffee culture is considered one of the best in the world. We put care in our coffee as cafe owners are encouraged to be unique and independent, as Australians are. Which brings us to Melbourne, an ever-growing coffee hub consisting of an array of hidden cafes that are either hard to find or cafes that are hard to miss. That's why it is so important to understand this culture if you're visiting Melbourne for the first time or if you're just living here. But first, a quick history lesson. According to some historians, the first recorded coffee arrived in Australia in 1788 through the first fleet from England which carried convicts. It wasn't until the 1930s that blossomed the coffee culture we have today. Migrants from Europe changed the way coffee was consumed. Coffee shops sprang up in cities, espresso makers came with new migrants as did new beans and grinders and different methods to brew different kinds of coffee. Flash forwarding to 2020, we have come a long way. With the introductions of new technologies such as innovative coffee machines, equipments and the norm of having uniquely styled coffee shops, it is crucial that you must visit the city. So let's go. First on the list is Tulip Coffee, which is located on DeGrave Street. The location itself is surrounded by one of the most popular laneways in Melbourne, full of street art, boutique stores and places to dine. With a speciality coffee bar shining bright with pink, it's a simple concept yet stands out to the naked eye. The aesthetic of the place gives anyone who walks inside a warm welcome as they are greeted with the friendly environment and the super nice staff that works there. The cafe has several different roasts and blends to choose from and is definitely worth a visit. Opened by baristas Leo Lee and Calvin Co, serving small batches candy man beans as their house blend, this coffee shop is located on Drury Lane. The Little Rogue is a tiny coffee shop and hard to find as it is one of Melbourne's hidden gems. With exposed bricks from the outside and the mixture of white and blue in the inside, this place gives the customer a more of a homey and an organic feel. Oh yes, and they also have a selection of homemade sweets to choose from, besides the amazing coffee. What attracts you about Little Rogue? It is very strong. Yeah, strong coffee. <laughs> Beans, I love them. Head over to Little Rogue now and see for yourself. Make your way towards Crimper Cafe. Again, it is a hard cafe to find, hidden in one of the alleyways located in Guildford Lane. The interior design uses low lighting with brick walls surrounding the cafe, giving it an industrial feel. The size of the cafe is huge as to some other cafes in the CBD. The cafe tables and chairs are made from recycled lift doors and old timber pieces. There is a 100 year old lift car which was used to carry timber in factories since the 1900s in Australia. Besides the coffee, the lift car here is the highlight where you can sit inside and appreciate the beauty of the place. Crimper is definitely a must go for people seeking for a cafe that gives them a spacious and a creative atmosphere. How hard is it to find Crimper Cafe for someone who hasn't been there before? Uh, ridiculous. There's this really awesome busker coming towards ahead. I don't know if you guys can hear him, but let me just show you. That guy was so good. Finally bought a coffee. It'd be rude not to. I'll show you guys this coffee place soon by the end of the video, but we have something to discuss. Last year I took a subject called Introduction to Sociology at University. Sociology is basically the study of human relationships, everyday culture and social interactions. My lecturer recommended us a book called The Sociological Imagination by a famous sociologist named C. Wright Mills. The author urged readers to look at different aspects of their life from a different perspective. The best way to illustrate what this involves is to take a simple act which millions of people do every day, such as drinking a cup of coffee. A sociological investigation of coffee reveals that there are many social constructs that are associated with the act. Coffee is not just a drink but can hold a symbolic value that correlates with social interaction. Sometimes the act of getting a coffee with someone is more important than drinking the coffee itself, which forms a basis for socializing. It's interesting, isn't it? Just something to think about. Next, 
Named after the legendary merchant Baba Budan who smuggled seven coffee seeds out of Yemen, this cafe was opened in 2003. BBB, which is Brother Baba Budan, is yet again a tiny cafe with more chairs on the ceiling than the floor. The eccentric style of this place is as good as the coffee you get and attracts hundreds of loyal Melbournians to walk through them doors every day. How good is Melbourne? <laughs> Finally on the list, Sensory Lab, which has been an active part of the Melbourne speciality coffee scene since 2009. With numerous stores just in the CBD area, they preserve the title of being one of the best cafes in Melbourne. And throughout the years, it has grown both domestically and internationally. Their approach to technology and innovation with their products and their attitude of always experimenting with different blends makes them unique and is personally one of my favourite places to go. <laughs> I'm an advocate for Melbourne, right? I love this city. But the thing with Melbourne is it has the ability to have four seasons in one day. I started off the day, it was so beautiful. It got a bit windy towards the end, but I had a feeling it would rain. Then I checked the weather and there was thunderstorms coming. But luckily I got a lot of good shots today. Actually, let me just come here. Melbourne's coffee culture is very diverse. It's very unique. It's not just predicated upon being hidden or artistic. We actually back it up by the coffee we serve. And we hold that title by being one of the best coffee cultures in the world. That's a very big thing. So if you're a Melbourneian and you haven't gone to these places, make sure to go to the CBD and check these places out. Finally, I do want to say though, I don't think I'm just going to do a three-part Melbourne CBD series. I know in the start of my first vlog, uh, I think it was a Save the Street Art one, I did say that I was gonna do a three-part series. I'm just having too much fun doing these vlogs, you know? I'm meeting new people in the process, having interesting conversations, and just gaining new experiences. And in return, I'm learning more about my own city in the process, which is very flourishing for me personally. I think I just have this one vision of my channel. I think I'm just gonna stick with it. And I'm very excited for the future. Before I do go though, here are two more honorable mentions that I didn't mention in the start of this video. Check out Industry Beans. It's located on Little Collins Street and they make a killer iced latte. And head to Exploration Lane, the League of Honest Coffee is here. They're known for their great service, tasty coffee, and a delicious breakfast menu. There you go guys, that's the whole video done. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And see you guys in the future.